I played wonderful music for my family well into the winter's night. We celebrated the life of my mother and we mourned her passing with song and memories. She loved the songs I played and enjoyed listening to them. The last thing I can remember is playing for her and drinking because the liquor numbed the pain. Her funeral was a few days ago. The wound was still fresh. I remember pressing the bottle against my lips and the rush of rum onto my palate. Then everything went black, and here I am now. My temples throb. My limbs are heavy. I peel my eyes open and see darkness. My throat lurches to life as I draw a breath in. What sort of catastrophe could reduce me to this? Who has placed me here? Where am I? I raised my right hand and felt something cold, wooden, and stiff. I sniffed the air. This thing that I am entombed in is no more than wood. I try to bring my hands to my chest, but I cannot. The wood is only inches from my face. I cannot extend my arms outward either. The planks are pressed against both of my shoulders. Where was I before this? All I can remember is the laugh of my guests as they departed from my home. The cool night, the soft snow whirling against my brow. In a hurry, I turned from the door with my drink in hand, and then I remember now. I tried to catch myself as I slipped. My actions were in vain because I spiraled through the doorway of my cellar and fell backwards into it. I had gone down there to get more drink. I remember. I remember now. I smell the dirt. I smell the wood. I am here. I exhaled a deep breath. Wherever I am, I am stowed away like bottles of rum in a crate. I can feel the wood at the bottom of my feet and at the top of my head. It is all around me, in the shape of a rectangle. I know where I am. I know what happened. They thought I was dead and buried me. They thought I was dead. They buried me. My eyes widened as I realized what happened. I opened my mouth and tried to scream. It hurts. Pain tore through my throat like it never had before. I took a breath in and winced in agony. The air felt like glass scraping down my throat. Why? I tried to lurch back in my confined space, but there was not any room to move. I pry open my eyelids as far as I can and see nothing. I silence my breathing and hear nothing. I release my breath and it is quiet. I coughed and the pain was absolute and unbearable. The sound that left my lungs seemed chunky, as if my lungs had been filled with mucus, or even worse, they had not been used for a great while. My heart began to race as I pressed my forehead against the cold wooden planks in front of me. I tried to punch through them, but all I did was hurt my hand. What would excite such terror in the ones who love me to all agree that my life had indeed expired? Did they assume I had died because I fell into the cellar and an immeasurable amount of time passed before they found me? They knew that I was intoxicated and stumbled about. 
Is it so hard to believe that they thought I was dead? Considering I was acting like a buffoon? And now, here I am because of that buffoonery. Mistake. Had they not checked my pulse? Had they not checked that my heart was still beating? My breath pushed against the wood. And as I wiggled about in my coffin, I began to sweat. My heart thumped harder, and though I couldn't see anything, it seemed like the area I was in became smaller as I became larger. Terror struck me. A subtle tingling crept up from my fingertips and washed across my whole body as I lay silent and still. My face sank as the truth of the situation pressed upon me. I cannot panic. I must remain calm. Yet again, I tried to speak. The pain was too great, and despite my suffering, I still couldn't make a sound. I screamed in my head that I wasn't dead, that a mistake had been made. I wasn't dead. I wasn't dead. In my mind, I pleaded for my wife, Marie, vainly hoping that somehow she could hear me. I abandoned the hope that she or anyone else could hear me and lay in this cold grave. Hours, what it seemed like anyway, passed on. I don't know if I had fallen asleep or if I was sleeping, caught in this grip of a horrible nightmare. Suddenly, voices gouged the silence. Two voices, one of a man and the other of, of my wife. I tried to say her name, Marie, 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 please help me. I beat my hand against the surface of the coffin with all the force I could summon and shattered my wrist, and the bones in my forearm split in two and tore through my skin. A scarlet liquid poured from the hole in my arm and ran down my side. I cried in agony as I felt the warm rush of blood. The talking above me stopped. They must have heard me, they must have. I took my left hand and began to knock at the surface of the coffin, for maybe I could still capture their attention. The talking above me resumed. She spoke of our wedding, of when we welcomed our children into life, and of every moment I longed to discuss, to remember. I tried to speak, yet not a sound came. I knocked harder, wrapping my knuckles against the wooden coffin. Blood too began to spill from my knuckles as I beat them to a bloody mess. I kicked the coffin and broke my big toe. There is no other way. I am not dead. I must get out. I tried to scream once more to no avail, and then, then, and now, now, the talking ceased. I beat harder against my coffin, and now, now, I used my forehead as a hammer and pounded. Moments passed on. Their voices grew fainter as they, for what I can only assume, walked away from my grave. It's clear now. It's clear. They cannot hear me, for the dirt has muffled my attempts to break free from this coffin, and yet, even though I remain here, I still cling to the hope that somehow, someone will hear me. I kicked and drove my knees into the coffin until I heard a break. The smell of dirt became stronger and a single plank snapped. Dirt poured into the coffin and it buried my legs. I tried to move them, but I could not. Dirt had filled the space below my waist. And though its pour had slowed down, it continued to drop into the coffin. I must devise a plan to break free from this coffin and claw through the dirt. Yes, this may kill me, but I'd rather die by being crushed from hundreds of pounds of dirt rather than a slow suffocation sure to come. 
I banged my head against the wood, and as I did so, more dirt dropped into the coffin. It had now covered my waist, and as I wiggled about, the dirt inched closer to my jaw. With each breath, more dirt flowed in until it reached my earlobes. Though I tried, I could not move my arms. I turned my head and felt the globs of dirt arrive at my neck. It piled in until all that remained above the dirt was my face. I could not turn my head or even move it up. Dirt had filled every inch of this coffin and left the tiniest pocket of space for my mouth and nose. Frozen and locked in this dirt coffin, I could not move. I could not turn my head. I tried to scream, and as I failed to make a sound, something small and scaly slithered into my mouth. 